So hello everyone, I'm Colton Allen, uh, like you said, from Century. Uh, I'm a senior software engineer working on the Replay product, so um, if you're familiar with the product, thank you, please keep paying for it. I need to put my kids through college. Um, so today I wanna to talk to you about uh, optimizing uh, high cardinality aggregations. So, uh, but before I do that, is it cool if I brag about my company real quick? Uh, please say yes, because I already made the slide. We use ClickHouse at Century a ton. Um, Century uh, loves ClickHouse. Um, it's a fantastic database, and uh, we're, we're heavy users of it. In fact, I'm pretty sure nearly every product uh, relies on ClickHouse in some way or another. So we'll do, at peak, about one and a half million rows per second inserted into the database, uh, 40 million queries an hour, and we run on a cluster of, I don't know, somewhere around 140 servers. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, I don't know how big that is to everyone else in the audience, but to me it's pretty big. And uh, so a huge shout out to the operations and uh, infrastructure team at Century, um, and of course the ClickHouse team. None of this would be possible without all those people, so uh, thank you very much. The problem statement, you're writing aggregation queries and uh, you're running out of memory. Um, or you're writing aggregation queries and uh, they're slow. Um, now I know slow is kind of relative here, but I mean like significantly slower than just scanning the database or scanning your table. Um, so before we talk about anything else, uh, we're gonna set up a sort of a mock environment we're gonna work against. Um, we're gonna pretend we have some sort of hits product, um, and in that table, the hits table, we're gonna record two things. Uh, we're gonna record a user ID, and we're gonna record a URL. And the basic premise of the product is, is we wanna be able to fetch users um, and return all the URLs that the that user visited. So this is the set of requirements I mentioned earlier. It's just been translated into SQL. So you can see there's a couple parts. There's the part where we uh, group by the URLs, and then there's the part where we, um, uh, we're performing the aggregation against the user ID. Um, we're also doing this uh, uh, filtering operation here in the having clause, which I didn't exactly spell out to you, but um, uh, essentially, you know, it's gonna be expected that people can filter against the, the data set in some way. So uh, that's gonna be one of the conditions we, um, we work against. Okay, so this query works really great. Uh, we run it in our test suite, uh, everything's perfect. Uh, we deploy it to prod and immediately, you know, the, the world falls apart, it crashes, we run out of memory. So the question is why, and we start reviewing this query, um, and we're trying to triage it, uh, strip out anything uh, that's not necessary. Um, and as we're looking through it, like, yeah, we have to group, we have to select by these things, because, you know, we need to return the URLs, we have to filter, um, and it really just doesn't seem like there's anything we can do. Uh, but there is something we can do. Um, so if we're gonna simplify the query for a moment, uh, we're not gonna worry about the having clause for now, we're just gonna worry about the, the remaining components. So the first problem we're gonna encounter is that this limit down here uh, doesn't quite work the way you think it does. It does work the way you think it does in the sense that, uh, <laughs> it does work in the way you think it does, in the sense that it will limit uh, the result set, but our intuition kind of fails us because uh, we may think that this limit means we're only gonna aggregate 10 rows. In reality, we're gonna aggregate every row in the database, or in the, in the, in the hits table. Um, and then we're just gonna take the top 10, or the first 10, or however uh, ClickHouse finds those records. Um, so if we wanna calculate the total memory usage of this query, um, it would be something like, at a minimum, uh, basically the size of the hits table, but the, the, unique, um, the number of unique user IDs and the number of URLs uh, in, the, in the table. Uh, and that would give us sort of a minimum bound on memory usage. Uh, and of course, memory usage will exceed that. There's a lot of incidentals that uh, ClickHouse will, will come across. Okay, so I don't like this particularly at all. Um, so I don't want to aggregate the URLs for every user in the database. I just wanna do it for the 10 users I'm interested in. Um, so one thing we can do, and it's alluded to in the, um, in the title, is that we can split our search queries from our data queries. So we'll still group by the user. This query is still, the outer query, is still very similar. We're still selecting from hits, group by, but now we're doing this where clause, and the where clause looks suspicious too because it's very similar to our original query, except we're not aggregating by the URLs here in the select statement. Um, so what this will do, this inner query, um, it's going to scan the whole table, um, but it's not gonna aggregate any URLs because we haven't instructed it to, and then it's gonna return 10 user IDs, whatever. And then this outer query is only gonna aggregate the URLs for the 10 users that uh, the inner query found. So now the memory usage for the data query is um, uh, decoupled from the memory usage of the search and sort query, search and sort query uh, in, this, uh, in this inner block. And that's important because basically now we can, we can perform this query and it'll return correctly. So now we wanna add back in our having clause. So what we're gonna do 
because we're going to put it back in here. But unfortunately, we're still grouping uh, by the URL. Um, and um, as it turns out, it doesn't matter if you group by the URL in the select clause or you do it in the having clause, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to aggregate every URL in, in the data set. And this query will again blow up and we've, we've not accomplished anything. Um, so let's ignore the outer query. We'll just call it done. And we're going to focus on this inner query and see what we can do to memorize memory usage there. So we know group array URL is going to aggregate every URL in the, um, in the table. And we know that amount of data is too large. And we also know that our job is dependent upon getting this data back to the user. So how do we ask the question, um, is A contained within the set of B if the set of B is too large to fit into memory? So first things first, uh, this is a URL column uh, that's in totally unmanageable data type to deal with in these, um, in these sort of situations. So we want to encode this value as something uh, smaller and more manageable. So what we'll do, and this is kind of a subtle change, uh, is we won't aggregate the URL. We'll aggregate the expression URL is equal to some operand. Um, and this will give us a one or a zero. So now, instead of having a big array of strings, we'll have a big array of zeros and ones. So um, in the average case, this will be significantly more memory efficient. It's still not good enough. Um, but you can see we can still perform this operation and get back a correct result. Now that we have this array of, um, of integers, uh, we can actually do something really special. And that's we can collapse them down into a single u size. So as we're going through uh, checking the expression URL is equal to some value, uh, we can store it in a single integer rather than an array. So um, basically what we've done is we've created a bit mask. And we've, uh, and we've then cr collapsed that bit mask into a, a single summation. Um, so now this um, query is only going to consume uh, the, uh, the memory amount of a U size on your system. So if you have a 64-bit system, that will use like eight bytes of memory to, um, to hold each individual aggregation state for this, this condition. Um, so we went from huge unbounded array to a smaller unbounded array <laughs> to a definitely bounded single integer value. And so this is good enough for us to ship to prod because uh, this value you know, does what we want it to do, uh, and it doesn't use any memory basically at all to accomplish it. OK. So you may not have seen the slide change, but it did. If you look at this operator right here, it was greater than 0. Um, so before, what we were saying is some URL equals whatever. And we're saying if we saw a 1 anywhere in the set, greater than 0, uh, to return true, and that basically means that the URL is in the set, uh, the aggregation state would return. Now if we say zero, if the URL was not found in the set, uh, it will only return aggregation states which did not contain uh, century IO in the URL column. We can also uh, set this to two or whatever value we'd like, whatever integer we'd like. And now we can say, only show me those aggregation states where the user visited century IO twice. Um, that was something that was really hard to do in the previous context, but now it's pretty easy. We can also um, do complex expressions within these parentheses. So we can say URL is equal to some value. Timestamp is greater than some value. And so now what we're saying is if uh, a user visited Century IO twice since November 1st, then return that aggregation set. Um, so you may be thinking, well, yes, that's really cool, but I can move that up into the where clause. Why don't I just do that instead? The issue with doing it in the where clause is, well, there's no issue here. You, you actually could promote it to the where clause, and that's an optimization you can do. Uh, but if you have two queries, like let's say you want to return the aggregation state where URL A is present and URL B is present, well, you can't do that as a row-wise operation. You have to do it as an aggregation state. And you can see that represented here. So here I'm saying where Sentry was visited twice or Instacart was visited at least once. By the way, shout out to Instacart for uh, hosting. OK, so this is a cool query. ClickHouse is tracking all sorts of metadata. Um, and, uh, and this query will fetch it. So it has a ton of performance insights relevant to uh, what we're trying to accomplish. But uh, one of the particular insights is memory usage. And you can see if we run this query, everything's about the same. We scan the same number of rows, same number of bytes. But the memory usage is dramatically different. Um, now, uh, we're all adults. We know that it didn't use zero memory. Uh, but it used so little memory that ClickHouse didn't feel any sort of need to record and report that memory. So this top query is the, optimized, uh, the unoptimized, and this would be the optimized query on the bottom. 
So you can see what a dramatic difference this can make for memory usage. And if you had a more realistic data set like uh, I did in production, uh, we saw 100x, 1000x decline uh, in memory usage for certain queries, not all. Um, also, uh, just a uh, word of caution when you're working with this memory usage column, uh, don't look for 10 or 20% improvements. Look for orders of magnitude. Um, this will fluctuate a lot, so don't, don't read into it if you get like five megabytes less. Um, you want to see like, you know, 10x, 100x, uh, less memory consumed. Let's digress and talk about granularity and how we can manage it. So we've changed the query a little bit. There's now a timestamp column in the hits table. The granularity of this query is to start of year, and the period is also the year of 2023. So we know this query will return uh, minimum zero rows, but at most one row. So if you were to guess, um, if this query wasn't performing very well, and I gave you the choice of guessing, is it, uh, a memory usage problem, or is it a row scan problem? Um, you'd probably say it's a row scan problem, you'd be, you'd be right. Um, there's really no memory usage concern here because there's only one aggregation state generated by ClickHouse. If we increase the granularity now, so we're doing to start of nanosecond, we're gonna have a significant number of aggregation states. Even though we're scanning the same number of rows, this query is gonna perform significantly worse because the amount of memory we consume is, uh, well, significantly higher. It's the, the cardinality of the, uh, of the aggregation key that's gonna drive memory in this particular situation. So if you wanna fix this query, the correct way to do it um, would be to alter the period. If you're gonna sort or uh, aggregate by nanosecond, you probably wanna have a period of about a microsecond. Uh, but if you want to uh, query over the period of a year, you should probably use a granularity of maybe a day. Um, it really doesn't make sense to use this. There's a granularity periodic uh, mismatch. But if we're aggregating by AD, and this query's failing. Um, we can't change the granularity of a user ID, it is what it is. And we can adjust the period, um, but there's no guarantee that the period will contain less cardinality. Um, you know, you could have the same amount of cardinality in a smaller subset of the period as you did in the larger period. There, there's no guarantee that cardinality would change because the two are no longer linked. Um, this is totally determined by just sort of the patterns of the way the data is ingested. Um, and there's no easy answer to fixing memory usage in this uh, particular query. Uh, everything we do will require some sort of trade-off. Um, so one thing we can do is sampling. Um, now ClickHouse has sampling built into it. I haven't represented that here, but it'll work very similar. What I've chosen to do it manually. But basically what we're gonna do is in the where clause, we're gonna hash the user ID, and then we're gonna use the modulus uh, operator and then use some, some value. Um, in this case, 10. So we're gonna use 10% uh, of our data set to compute this aggregation. Um, and uh, what this will do is it'll take an aggregation state of uh, a billion and reduce it to 100 million. Uh, and if you can make this, um, this operand larger or smaller, depending on uh, what you're trying to accomplish. But basically, this is a good way of cutting down uh, the number of, uh, the number of ag uh, aggregation states possible. Important note, uh, this is deterministic for, um, th this is deterministic. So if a user ID matches this condition, obviously all the user IDs will match. So your aggregation states will always be complete, um, but you'll miss 90% of your data. So if you want accurate aggregations, this is a good step, but if you want the broadest representation of your data spread across as many rows as possible, might not be the best. Also, because this is deterministic, you always select the same 10%. So if you wanna get that other slice of 10 somewhere else, you'd have to change uh, this value here. So ClickHouse exposes this uh, settings uh, keyword, um, and there's, Two, two particular uh, settings that I want to apply with you today. So one is max rows to group by, the other is group by overflow mode. So max rows to group by is really interesting. It's somewhat misnamed too. The rows, is, it's, it's saying that it's going to stop, it's going to limit to. So one row, the maximum number of rows to group by is one. It's not talking about rows in the, in the table. It's talking about the intermediate aggregation states before you um, uh, return your response. Um, and uh, the max in the rows is also sort of a misnomer because uh, max is uh, sort of a suggestion and not a, um, a hard limit. So um, I can't give you uh, specifics, maybe somebody from the ClickHouse team can, but I think because uh, a lot of these operations run in parallel and those uh, processes don't uh, communicate with one another, you end up with a bunch of different uh, aggregation states that all run to their max and then join, and so you have a much larger um, intermediary aggregation state. Uh, we'll actually explore that a little more later, um, but for right now, we'll skip it. Okay, so in this case, we're gonna set it to one. Um, this is kind of contrived. I wouldn't do this in production, but 
we'll do it here. Um, okay, so the next uh, parameter is group by overflow mode. So there's three modes. You can basically tell it to keep going once it reaches its limit. You can tell it to stop immediately, or you can tell it to throw an error. Uh, error is not particularly useful to me, but the other two can be uh, particularly good. Um, you may think, <clears throat> because, well, you might not think, since I told you, but since this is one, our max rows to group by, we could drop this limit. Now, uh, we can't actually do that. Like I said earlier, ClickHouse will actually return more than one row, uh, even though this max rows to group by setting uh, says it won't. Um, so, but it does so for good reasons, so don't worry. Um, so anyway, if we run uh, a query and we apply the three separate um, uh, group by overflow modes, so we're gonna have the same limit, but we're gonna have different overflow modes, and you can see the difference in break. Break has fewer rows red, um, but any uh, reads the whole data set, um, and they both consume about the same amount of memory, which is significantly less than, um, than the uh, no unconfigured query. Um, what's interesting about any, and it's not represented here, um, is that any won't return perfect results. It'll return better results than break, but it's not perfect. Um, and uh, there's probably a good reason for that, but uh, uh, it would probably be too much conjecture on my part. I don't have a, enough concrete data, but suffice it to say, if you use any, don't expect, expect perfect aggregation states, but you can get pretty close. So uh, earlier I mentioned that you shouldn't remove the limit from the query. Remember we had the limit one, then we had the max rows group by equals one. Um, well, if you do remove the limit that I specifically told you not to, uh, you'll get back a whole bunch of rows. So even though our max rows group by is one, we got nearly 8,000 rows back. Um, so this slide is just to demonstrate that, yes, it does return more aggregation states than it claims. If your aggregation key is a prefix of the table's ordering, um, it will, ClickHouse will run to the end. So they don't actually matter at all. Um, this memory usage is just luck. So it's the perfectly identical queries. ClickHouse is gonna consume every row in the set, um, or at least it did in this contrived data set. It may, uh, it may vary in production workloads. But in this case, I do wanna uh, clarify that this is sort of a low cardinality aggregation use case, um, uh, which is kind of outside the, the purpose of this talk. Uh, but this does get the point across that these settings are not absolute, they're not perfect. And so if you wanna use them, you should do your own testing. Uh, make sure you're measuring and not just assuming. So uh, we talked about a lot. Um, so this is sort of a final query. Uh, so if you remember earlier, it was very simple. It encompassed about four lines. But now we have the outer data query, um, which wraps this inner query, where we're just selecting the user ID to minimize the memory usage we use. We're making sure that we are um, using compressed data types in our filter clauses. And then we're using these, these settings to limit the impact um, that just aggregating the primary key, the, uh, the aggregation target itself will cause. Um, so anyway, um, this is kind of the end. <laughs> so thank you all for listening. Um, if, uh, if you would like to uh, ask me questions, or more importantly, if you'd like to tell me where I'm wrong, please meet me after the talk. I'm always happy to learn, always happy to listen. Um, but uh, thanks, everyone. And Happy aggregating, so thanks so much. Yeah.